Hello and welcome to my channel IELTS Listening. Let's start with one of the best practice tests for improving listening skills. Part 1 You will hear two students discussing a project on international festivals with their tutor. First, to look at questions 1 to 5. Listen carefully. Good morning. Shall we start by looking at the topic of your project? So, what have you decided to research? Well, we thought we'd compare festivals in different countries and see if any of them are similar. Yeah, you know, like the carnival celebrations in South America and the water festival in Thailand. OK. What exactly are you planning to study? The origins of the festivals? The types of celebration? People's attitudes towards the festivals? We were planning to look at the origins of the festivals and the time of year they're celebrated. We're thinking of looking at the connection between the seasons in different countries and the actual festivals and then looking for similarities between countries that are quite far apart. Well, that sounds interesting. Did you say you've already started researching into the carnival? Yes. We've already found a connection between the carnival and the seasons. For instance, some researchers say that a very long time ago in Europe, people used to put on colourful masks and costumes at the beginning of the year to celebrate the end of winter, and then they could get ready for spring. Right. And then what happened? Well, as the years went by, the purpose of the carnival changed and it became a religious festival. These days, there are big carnival celebrations in countries all across the world, like Brazil and India and Indonesia. But an interesting thing we discovered is that in some countries, people celebrate the carnival by throwing water at each other in the street. Well, we thought that, obviously, this is because carnivals celebrated at the hottest time of the year, just before the rainy season. So, splashing people with water is a very good way of cooling them down. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, in the exam, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Hmm, yes, that makes sense. Um, did you look into any other festivals? Yes, we did. What we're planning to do is more research into water festivals. We found that in Asian countries, where there aren't any carnival celebrations, there are still festivals that involve people splashing each other with water. Actually, we found references to them in Burma, Thailand, Vietnam, China and Japan. But we also found a reference to a water festival in Mexico. So we thought we'd look into that a bit more and see if we can find any similarities between these countries. Uh, I mean, we realise that water is more than just a way of cooling people down in hot weather. It also has a lot of different religious meanings and purposes. For instance... We found that in some societies, water can mean life, or wealth, or just luck. Yes, and another thing we found out is that these water festivals often celebrate the beginning of the new year, just like the original celebrations hundreds of years ago before the carnival. So, um, up to now, we found that the carnival and the seasons are linked by ancient traditions, and that water plays an important part in the celebrations. That is the end of part one. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. Listen to the whole survey in the correct order and answer the questions. First, look at questions 11 to 14. Listen carefully. Uh, excuse me. Good morning. We're students from St Anne's School and we're doing a class survey. Have you got five minutes to answer a few questions? Uh, I suppose so. What are the questions about? About spending habits, people's attitudes to money and what they spend money on. Well, yes. OK. But only five minutes. Thank you. OK. First of all, if you don't mind answering, what income band are you in? You just need to say low, average or high. Oh, that's difficult to say. Uh, I don't know how much everyone else makes. <laughs> I'm certainly not poor, but I'm not rich either. Certainly not after I've paid all my bills. Shall we say in the middle then? Yes, I think so. And how much money do you feel you have to spend? You said that you have to pay a lot of bills. Yes, I feel that I don't have very much. I earn quite good money, but it doesn't feel like that most of the time. I guess everyone would like to have a bit more money, though. OK, so what do you spend most of your money on? Well, most of it goes on monthly expenses. I've got a big mortgage on my house and my children's school fees are very high. After I've paid for gas and electricity and water and all the insurance on the house and my car, I don't have much left. I like taking my wife out to a nice restaurant once a month, but I don't very often buy clothes. Oh, and I collect radios. <laughs> Old radios. That's my hobby. And how do you usually pay for the things you buy? I use my debit card for most things these days. I have two credit cards, but I don't like using them. I prefer to pay for things immediately. Otherwise, I feel I'm getting into debt. I pay my bills online or over the telephone. I usually have between £10 and £20 in cash with me to pay for emergencies, taxi fares and that kind of thing. What do you think is good value for money? Hmm, not very much, to tell you the truth. Everything seems to cost more than it should these days. I think my telephone and internet broadband package is good value for money, though. That's my telephone line, any number of national calls and unlimited internet use for only £22 a month. I think at least one member of my family is online for an hour or more every day. I think £22 is a very good deal. And what do you think is a waste of money? Personally, I don't understand why anyone buys a new car. They are so expensive, and as soon as you drive them out of the showroom, they're worth £3,000 less. Perhaps I'm just saying it because I can't afford a new car myself.
But to me, it seems so much more sensible to buy a good second-hand car for half the money. Do you ever buy anything you can't afford? Yes. I collect radios. Old radios. I have nine now, and they're quite expensive. I paid £350 for a 1950s radio last month. I didn't have much money for the rest of the month after that. My wife thinks I'm crazy, but it's important to treat yourself occasionally, don't you think? My wife buys nice perfume and lots of clothes, and I have my radios. OK, so finally, would you say that you're a spender or a saver? Well, as I said, I don't really have much to save, but I guess I'm a saver rather than a spender. It's good to enjoy money if you have it, but you must save for a rainy day. You never know what will happen in the future. Thank you very much for talking to us. Have a nice day now. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear three conversations. The first and the third between two students, and the second between a student and a clerk. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. I'm looking for the main hall. So am I. Are you going there to register for next year? Yes. I was told to go to administrations and fill in an application form. That's what I'm about to do. I went to information and they told me it was at the end of this corridor. Then we have to turn left and immediately right. That should lead us to the exit, where opposite we should find the entrance to ground level main hall. It's a big old red building. From there we need to go to the first level and then follow the signs. Apparently it's the second office opposite the foyer. It would be pretty hard to miss. That sounds easy. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Well, since we're both heading in that direction, let's go together. Hopefully it won't take too long. I haven't had anything to eat and I'm starving. Me too. Well, how about I go to the canteen and get us something while you make your way to the main hall? I'm sure there's going to be quite a wait. There always is. I can meet you there. Sounds like a good plan. What do you want me to get you? Um, how about a chicken and salad roll and a drink? OK. What if they don't have a chicken and salad roll? Anything similar, like ham and salad, or just plain salad and cheese. Oh, and don't forget the drink. I feel so dehydrated. No problem. What type of drink? I don't know. Um... How about a Coke? No, nothing like that. Something healthier. An orange juice? They're usually full of sugar unless you get it freshly squeezed. Water? Yes, that's perfect. Here, take two pounds. That should cover it. If it's more, I'll give it to you when you get back. I only have a 20, and you know that they get cranky if you give them large notes. OK. See you in five minutes. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. First year economics. I just have to fill out this form for our records. What's your name? Phoebe Payne. Can you spell that for me? Sure. P-H-O-E-B-E-P-A-Y-N-E. -E. Your address? 6 Wainwright Avenue. That's W-A-I-N-R-I-G-H-T, Nottingham. Nottingham. And your phone number? It's not connected yet. I've just moved in. OK. When you get your phone connected, contact us. I'll just make a note that your phone number is to be advised. I'll do that. What course were you doing? Law? No. Economics. First year. First year economics. Yes, that's right. OK. Take this card across to the economics department and get it stamped. And then you need to come back here to pay your fees. I've made an arrangement to pay in instalments. Do you have any documentation verifying that? Yes, I have a statement from administration. OK, when you return, we'll have a look at it. Thank you very much. Here you are. It was quicker than I thought, but I have to get this card stamped and return here to organise my fees. That's good. It means that I won't have to wait long either. How did you get on? What with? Oh, the food. Well, there wasn't much left, so I got you a cheese and tomato sandwich and water. That's fine. Do I owe you any more? No. I need to give you back three pounds. But I only gave you two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you gave me a fiver. OK, so we're square. So what do I have to do? Go to the desk and give your personal details. Then they'll give you a card that you need to take to your faculty. What's your major? Environmental science. OK, so you'll have to take the card to the environmental science faculty and get the card stamped, return to administration in the main hall and organise your fees. And that's it? Yes, that means you're registered. Then we receive a letter with the details of our course where we'll be informed to go to the notice board or online to find out when and where our lectures are. OK. Let's have this bite to eat first. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Dear viewers, thank you for taking this listening test. Please let me know about your score in the comments section below. Keep on practicing. It's the only way to be successful. We are planning to upload more IELTS helpful videos. Please subscribe to our channel, IELTS Listening. Thank you.